Christian Parenting. Aloha, friends, and welcome to the Monica Swanson Podcast, powered by Christian Parenting. I am Monica Swanson, mom to four boys, wife to Dr. Dave, podcast host and author of Boy Mom, Raising Amazing, and the newly released Becoming Homeschoolers. Here on the podcast, it is my goal to bring you practical advice and biblical wisdom for raising amazing kids and building strong families. You can always find show notes over at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. I'm so glad you're here, and I hope you'll be encouraged. Aloha, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to week three of my September Women's Wellness Series. I'm loving hearing from you guys that you're enjoying this, and goodness, there's so much more that I would love to tackle in this area of women's wellness. And even today's topic, we're just going to be scratching the surface, but I wanted to start off with a girlfriend chat because I think today's conversation about hormones, everything from PMS um, through perimenopause and menopause is something that we're all going to face at some point, and most of us have battled, and oftentimes uh, it's been a lonely journey. Somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Well, my good friend Greta Eskridge has shared very openly and vulnerably about her battle with figuring out hormones and really just trying to find some help for some difficult uh, symptoms. And I hope that this conversation is an encouragement to you, whether you relate directly or maybe just a little bit. I think this is important that we talk that we just talk about it, right? And we got to be here for each other. So I really appreciate that Greta was willing to come on and share. And just so you know, as I'm recording, I have scheduled another chat with an ob who specializes in hormones, especially on the topic of perimenopause and menopause. And I'm really excited to interview her and share that sometime this winter or perhaps in the new year. But Keep sharing with me your requests if you have a topic or a guest that you think would be great on any of these topics or any other topic. Just email me at aloha at monicaswanson.com. Now, before I dive into this conversation with Greta, I want to make sure that all of you homeschooling or maybe thinking about homeschooling families know about the math and science curriculum that my family has loved for years. And in fact, since I've been talking about it here on the podcast, I've heard from so many of you who have jumped in and also tried DiveIntoMath.com, which offers state-of-the-art e-learning in both math and science classes. Now, important to note that Shorman Algebra 1 and 2, which is part of the Dive curriculum, teaches every concept on the PSAT, SAT, and ACT with over 200 practice questions. So if you want to prepare your child well for all those tests, which if they want to go to college are really helpful, definitely check out Shorman Algebra 1 and 2. Your kids can also earn up to 32 college credits with included CLEP and AP prep. Now you know my sons who are now college graduates somehow give Dr. Shorman and these classes credit for preparing them well for their college degrees in data analytics and engineering. So I think that says a lot. So again, go over to diveintomath.com, check out everything they have to offer. Your kids are going to love the short and to the point lessons. Dr. Shorman's such a great teacher and also a four-day work week if they get their work done. So go check it out. Let me know what you think and hope you love it like we have. And now without further ado, let's jump in and talk with my friend Greta about the lonely and challenging side of hormones and how we can navigate better. I hope this is an encouragement to you. All right. Hey, Greta, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You're such a pal. You know that. <laughs> Greta, Greta, and well, that's I've been... what this podcast is going to be, right? The it, girlfriend chat. It is a girlfriend chat. That's exactly what it is. And we've faced some technical difficulties and scheduling difficulties, but here we are. And everyone listening can know that you are loved. And um, yeah, that. Greta's a, a good friend. She's got a lot going on right now. So I'm so grateful because we've been talking about this topic for goodness, many, many months. And when I decided to do this Women's Wellness Month, I was like, okay, this, I know one 
one topic where we've got to cover and I know who I want to talk to. So Greta, this is going to be good. <laughs> and before we jump into the specific topic, will you just give a brief introduction to yourself and your family? Sure. Um, I am, I think it's important to note that I'm 48 years old. Um, I feel like that's, <laughs> that's relevant. an important part of this podcast. Um, and I'm a mom of four. I have a 20 year old, an 18 year old, a 16 year old, and a 13 year old. So we're yep. like, you know, we're yeah. full in the older kid years and it's mm-hmm. fantastic. Right. Um, three sons, one daughter. Mm-hmm. And a homeschooler, I homeschooled my kids from the very start. I'm a second generation homeschooler. And I'm also an author. Uh, I've written two books. I have a third one coming right. in the spring. Mm-hmm. I'm a speaker um, and a pretty new podcaster. I've had a podcast for, I don't know, like a few months. I, mm-hmm. I kind of always forget that, but Monica is <laughs> helpful to remind me. You yes. have a podcast too. I'm like, oh yeah, I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, so that's, those are, you know, kind of all the different facets of my life. My husband and I have been married for 26 years and we live in Southern California I love, and I love coffee and nature and books. Mm. Good mix there. I like all those things too. And someday Greta and I are going to hang out in real life. It's going to happen. Um, we've got so many things in common from the stages of our kids' lives to the things we love and that we're passionate about. And I just, to know Greta, I think is just to love her because she's just got this smile. And I think your kids all got your smile, didn't they? Like you guys just have oh, such a happy, <laughs> happy presence to you in photos. And I love it. So And I also love that Greta talks, um, shares honestly and openly and vulnerably from her life. In fact, are we allowed to give a little sneak peek of the topic that'll be coming out next spring before we dive into today's conversation? Why not? I don't think it's a surprise to anybody, but yeah. Um, My next book is going to be a book that will be um, just kind of a guide for parents to talk to their kids about pornography, to give them tools to develop, um, really develop sexual integrity, what that looks like. Um, so, you know, you know, our, we all know our kids are growing up in a world that is full of a lot of things that are dangerous for them, um, bad for them in the present and the future mm-hmm. and really want to pull them away from God. And, um, pornography is one of the biggest culprits of all of those things. And so I'm presenting parents with just a toolkit for how to reject those things um, and pursue the good instead of the bad. Mm, Super good. Well, I'm so grateful that you are going there because it's not an easy subject to take on. So thank you. And anyone that knows me knows that I'm just a big believer in talking to kids about everything, having the hard conversations, even when they're awkward. And so today we're going to go there And we're going to have a girlfriend chat about hormones. And on this topic of women's wellness, I, there's so much, I mean, I, the month isn't long enough, so we're going to have to circle back and I can't wait to hear from everyone that listens to hear what you want to hear more of, but there's a lot we could talk about when it comes to hormones, especially on perimenopause and menopause and some of the things I'm just a few years ahead of Greta. So I'm in all this too, but, um, I talked to Greta in the, I don't know, many months ago. And when the topic has been like at least a year, right? Like we've been talking about it for a long time. We have, we actually have. (laughs) And, and I was super interested in your history with, with hormones. It isn't just like a perimenopause thing, but it goes way back. So I'm going to invite you to now just kind of share your journey because I'm sure that a few people listening can relate to, I know I can to parts of this, but go ahead and tell your story. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll try to be as succinct as possible, <laughs> That's even right. though that is not my strength. We all know. Um, <laughs> I, I think for me, like hormonal, um, like issues and struggles started even when I was a teen, mm-hmm. not for me so much physically, but emotionally, um, I really struggled every month, um, feeling like a lot of negativity, um, like really a lot of frustration and irritation. You know, people would say, oh, that's normal PMS, but Mm -hmm. it felt extreme even at that age. And um, especially because my normal, I would say, bent and personality and just view of the world is not pessimistic Mm -hmm. or it's 
negative. It's, I mean, I'm like a glass more than half full kind of person. Mm -hmm. I'm a natural optimist. That's just the way God designed me. And um, so to have like this, this really big shift that would happen every month was hard. Mm -hmm. Um, And it got much harder in my mid Mm thirties. I, as I look back, I could say actually, you know, through much of my life, I could see hormonal like struggles and even imbalances. But at the time I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Um, I just always felt like things were hard. Um, But by my mid thirties, I had had four kids, a traumatic miscarriage and um, was going through some marital problems. And really my hormones were um, just becoming more and more of an issue in my life. And again, it was a lot of the emotional stuff that was coming through and, um, and then some physical things started to happen for you. Like for the first time in my life, I was having migraines every month Mm -hmm. associated, not just with before I started my period, but also before I ovulated Mm -hmm. and, um, physical pain that came with ovulation and before my period where, you know, not just regular cramps, but really painful. And, um, and I had natural childbirth. So like mm-hmm. I can, and I had a 10 and a half no baby with no right. drugs. So I, I know about pain, like, yes. um, and, and to be laid low by like ovulation pain, like that so, seemed wow. so intense. Um, but I would, again, I would say even beyond the physical symptoms, those emotional symptoms mm. were, and, and to the point where it felt like it was affecting my mental health were mm-hmm. so challenging. Mm-hmm. I, every month when I ovulated and before I started my period, so twice a month for multiple days, I would be experiencing the physical symptoms, but also so much things like anxiety, um, overwhelm, mm. uh, crippling sadness, Mm. despair, frustration, Mm. negativity, rage. Um, and, and it would feel, I, I would felt out of control. Mm. And I think I, I shared with this with you another time, Monica, I felt like I could, when I wasn't in that chunk of time around my cycle, I would feel like, okay, so normal. Like if Mm. I just eat right this month. I exercise more. I sleep well. Um, I pray harder, right. read the Bible. Um, I use essential oils. I do all these things that I'm supposed to do. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be yeah. okay. It's wow. not going to happen again. And then every month it would, because mm. it wasn't related to all those things. Yeah. There was something else going on. It was a hormonal yes. imbalance and it was, um, it was so difficult that I felt sometimes like afraid. I wasn't myself. I knew Mm. I wasn't myself. Didn't know how to change. Wow. And at that point, had you gone to a regular medical doctor? Had you, had anyone given you any help or were you just feeling completely on your own? Um, um, I was pretty much, I mean, I had told some, you know, I talked to my mom about it, talked to some other women, but, but really still kind of on my own because I think we are told for so much of our lives that there are these certain things that are to be expected as part of being a woman and mm-hmm. having a monthly cycle that you're going to be grouchy. You know, there's jokes about PMSing women. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have to tell you one joke that is so funny that actually this sort of exemplifies it. I remember one time when my mom was, my brother and I were young, but old enough to know that my mom had like, you know, a cycle and that she would be grumpy around her cycle Mm -hmm. or irritable or whatever. And one time my little brother, whose name is Ben, he said to her, this is not a smart move on his point part. He was like in junior high or something. He's like, man, mom, why are you so grouchy? Are you having PMS? (laughs) He said, no, I'm having (laughs) B-E-N. We (laughs) we laugh about that to this day. Um, but, But like, that's kind of like the, the message we yes, receive, right? As totally. women. So yes. I, I felt like it was out of control and it was not right. But I, but at the same time, I didn't know that, like, I, I, I think I just didn't feel like I could get help, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Um, 
Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, I'm married to a medical doctor, and I my my family practitioner is a good friend, a female doc, and everyone. I feel like even doctors admit that they just aren't really trained. Western medicine isn't trained to really understand or appreciate hormones. I mean, sure, maybe the big stuff. I don't know, diagnose disease right. and. But when it comes right. to this, endometriosis I mean, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. But I feel like my doc has always just said like, well, eat healthy and exercise and you'll probably be fine. I mean, about, about PMS and about perimenopause and all of that. And I'm like, I know there's more to it than this. So yeah, that's really hard. It, yeah, it was. And the turning point for me was when, um, like this one moment where it, I was in the kitchen and I was cleaning um, which was kind of how I dealt with it a lot because I felt everything felt so out of control. So if yep. I control something, yep. then it was like, maybe it's going to be okay. Hmm. It never worked. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it felt like it, it's all I could do. Right. So I'm cleaning the house and I'm thinking like, if I just clean the kitchen, it's going to be okay. Um, and in our family, we would call that bad cleaning because I'm cleaning, not in a happy mood, listening mm-hmm. to upbeat music or you know, listening to a podcast or anything fun. I'm just slamming the kitchen doors and putting pots back, you know, in the cupboard with force. And, um, my husband came into the kitchen and he said, in just the sweetest and gentlest way, he said, honey, I think you need to get help because even the dog is afraid of you. Mm. And we had the sweetest golden retriever Mm. who, hated when I was Aww. in that mood. He Aww. even knew like Aww. we had little kids and the sweetest dog and he would Aww. go hide in the boy's bed more because he didn't want to be around me in that moment. Okay. And wow. I burst into tears. Um, and I can think about that story now and, and I can smile, but because there's, it's almost humorous. Like yeah. even the dog's right. afraid of you, right? but it wasn't funny almost in the humorous. moment. It was, no. you know, um, yeah. because I was so hurt and I knew he was right. And mm. he wasn't saying it to be mean. He was just like, honey, like you need help. Like something is wrong. Something, oh. this isn't you. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. that was when I got serious about trying to find help yeah. because, um, Everybody knew <laughs> mom needed help. Needed, Greta needed right. something. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned that your mom, you know, a time when your mom had PMS, is this something you were mm-hmm. able to talk to mom about? Like did her story help guide you in what to do next? Yeah, that was actually my first um, kind of foray into looking for help as I talked to my mom and other women who were older than me. Wise. And like, and shared like, this is what's happening. Yeah. You know anything about this? Do you have any advice? Because I, I felt like, you know, maybe like, maybe it was perimenopause or maybe there was something going on that I didn't know about yet and right. they could help me. So, um, my mom and multiple other women said, you need to look into something called bioidentical hormones. They're like, go to the doctor, get all of your hormone levels tested. Um, mm-hmm. um, but we are, have used bioidentical hormones ourselves, or we know somebody who did, and it was helpful for them. Mm-hmm. So it was hard to find a doctor who did that. So mm-hmm. first I went to my regular OB and, um, what she offered was to put me on birth control pills. Mm-hmm. And, um, I had never used hormonal birth control. I opted not to, um, but I was desperate. I didn't think that it was going to be the answer, but I was like, okay, I'll try. Sure. I tried for a month and made me feel even more crazy, mm. um, because it wasn't really addressing the issue. Right. So it didn't work. Um, I went to see a regular, our regular, like family doctor and, um, both of those doctors, I sat there and cried as I told them my story and how I felt. They both did hormone panels, both said I was in the range of normal. That doctor mm-hmm. wanted me to take antidepressants, mm-hmm. which again, might have made me feel better for the mm-hmm. time didn't, but I didn't feel like it was truly going to address the problem because mm-hmm. I had years, like years of writing notes of wow. all my symptoms that I tracked by date. Right. And every time they only were with ovulation and my period. Right. So the other times of the month, I wasn't having these issues. So, uh, an antidepressant was, was going to not really deal 
with the real issue, which I knew was. Right. It might even like flatten a lot of the emotions or moods throughout the month, highs and lows, right? And you're like, but I just have these couple days. Yeah. Yeah. So I I didn't want to, I didn't want that. That's a great way to describe it. I didn't want a flattening of all my emotions when what I was really dealing with was, you know, two days when I ovulated and three or four days during my period. That's a big chunk of the month to feel wretched, but I don't need to like be, Mm -hmm. you know, feeling nothing for all month. So finally I found a doctor who was, um, she was an, an MD. She had been an emergency room doctor for years and, and then um, was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer twice, mm. survived. And then as she was dealing with her own symptoms of perimenopause and menopause and the hormonal disruption that comes with that, she wanted hormonal support, but she needed something that wasn't um, like a synthetic hormone because she had to be really careful with her right. you know, cancer diagnosis. Yeah. So she pursued bioidentical hormones, which are hormones that are not synthetically made. Mm-hmm. Um, and had so much success with them. She started mm-hmm. talking about it with her friends and pretty soon she decided to open her, up her own practice where that was all she did. Wow. I went to her, shared my story, and I distinctly remember being in tears again, telling her how awful I felt and how hard things were and her taking my hand across the desk and saying, you don't have to feel like this anymore. I'm going to help you find the answers and you're going to feel better. And she, and she did. I'll bet that alone was just like, I bet you really cried then. (laughs) I did. did. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so to be heard and to like mm-hmm. have somebody validate you yeah. to say like these things are real that you're experiencing it's not just in your head you're not exaggerating mm-hmm. your pms symptoms mm-hmm. like i was only you know, like 37 years old to be yeah. told well you know maybe you're early menopausal but to just to be told like yeah this is real what you're experiencing mm-hmm. is real and it's hard wow. we're going to help you wow and that the, the next thing you did was went on bioidentical hormones, right? Yeah, I did. Um, and, and it was scary, like, cause I had never taken any kind of mm. medication, like on, mm. on a regular basis or anything, um, you know, mm-hmm. anything that we had to budget for. Um, and at first I felt bad about that. Like, oh, could I really, mm-hmm. you know, like, can I be the one that's, spending money in the, um, in the family on this, on myself mm. and all wow. those different things, the time that it was going to take for doctor appointments and lab work and all that stuff that you feel yeah. as, yes. I, I think, especially as a stay at home mom, homeschooling, sure, like, or any kind, you know, we all struggle, I think. Yeah. Taking but, time. But I'm guessing your, ourselves. your family was like, yes, we will <laughs> sacrifice for your mom. <laughs> Sorry, we want I'm mom just, to feel better. Um, I, I yes, could hear my, my husband was supportive. Yeah. My yeah. my kids, my you know, my like mom, selling everybody. their toys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Um, so and and it really was life changing. So mm. so helpful. Um, Praise God. And and it did like take every symptom away, but it mm-hmm. made I think go back to like what would be a norm considered sure. a normal level. A, like a livable life again, right. with right. my hormones being in balance instead of being out of balance. Yes. And and I think this is fair to say, like what you alluded to earlier was that we're told PMS is normal and that moods are going to swing. So when you're in it and you're asking, wait, is this what everyone feels, but I'm just like crazier or I can't handle it as well. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what's hard because it is, there is a normal part of that. I mean, since the fall, right, we're, we're going to go through all kinds of things in this life. And as women, we have some unique challenges, but I guess one question I would have, and I don't expect you to have the answer, but you know, for younger people, I just recently was talking to a college age girl who said that she really struggles with PMS And probably a doctor wouldn't suggest a bioidentical hormone during that season. So there may be a time where an antidepressant is going to be like Mm -hmm. better than nothing or 
um, yes. birth control might be a good option. So I think depending on what you're going through, the key is to find a doctor who will listen and care and mm-hmm. at least try something, right? Yeah. I mean, even for my daughter, who's only, she's 16 years old, but she has some of the same symptoms that I do. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like we've worked really hard to like remove things from our family and our home, our, our cosmetics, like things that are, are hormonally disruptive. Mm -hmm. So lots of things and sense and, um, you know, like we're really, I, I make sure we drink um, milk and use milk products that aren't treated with extra hormones. Like yeah. I've worked hard to, mm. um, to help her, right. uh, because I don't want her to suffer yeah. through what I have, but she, i she exhibits some of the same, mm. um, symptoms that I do not sure. as severe, but already at 16, like she's going to have some of those same mm-hmm. struggles. And my mom and my sister have mm-hmm. all had wow. diff- really difficult things associated with PMS. So some of it is like, it's our biology. We all, our bodies are all different, you know, just like how some women can have, you know, give birth in 45 minutes and some women, it takes four days to have a baby. Like our bodies are all different, Mm -hmm. but, um, I love what you said, like about not like we ask ourselves, well, maybe I'm just not strong enough. Like maybe Mm -hmm. I'm not strong enough to handle it. And, And I think we have to be careful with that because, um, if, if you feel like I did where it feels like your life and your, your head and your heart and your body feel out of control, Mm -hmm. that's not a time to say like, I'm just not strong enough to handle it. That's the time to say, okay, I need to ask somebody if. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. And amen. I mean, absolutely get, get help, talk to somebody because that's a time when it's not, not within normal range. Like it's okay to feel a little you know, a little extra on edge or frustrated, but yes, when you start to feel like it's out of control, absolutely get, get some help. It's back to school season and life is busy, but you can fuel up your whole family with factors, no prep, no mess meals can meet your wellness goals. Thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like calorie smart protein plus and keto factors, fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in get this just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. You can crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Head over to factormeals.com forward slash Swanson50 and use code Swanson50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code Swanson50 at factormeals.com forward slash Swanson50 and you're going to get your 50% off your first box and 20% off next month while your subscription is active. I hope you love it. Let me know how it goes. So then take us from there and lead us into the lovely season that you're in now. (laughs) And I'm, I'm even. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, I, a couple of years ago, maybe three years now, um, uh, uh, time, you know, starts to blend, but, Mm -hmm. uh, I think I really like experienced another shift in hormones and I started Mm -hmm. noticing new symptoms that I hadn't had. Mm -hmm. And it took me a little while to recognize like, oh, wait, something new is happening Mm -hmm. in my body. For the first time since I was pregnant, I was having uh, acid reflux Mm -hmm. and um, heartburn, Mm -hmm. which is the only time I had ever experienced that in my life was during pregnancy. Same, Mm -hmm. And and it's actually not related to weight gain, which are like people are like, oh, well, you have it when you're pregnant because you've gained weight and you've got this big baby in your belly, like mm-hmm. taking up all the room and all that stuff. And, and for some people that is the case, but I experienced heartburn and acid reflux when I was like two months pregnant. So mm-hmm. Same. Same. baby Same. was not taking up a lot yes. of space. I hadn't gained any weight yet. Cause I was too sick to eat. It was, okay. and the doctor told me, she's like, oh yeah, that's hormonal. Definitely. That's related to your hormones. Sure. And you'll probably have it the whole time. And she was right. Mm-hmm. Um, And I didn't have it again after each baby was born, it would go away like instantly. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And it would be so great. I would have the baby and I'd be like, oh my gosh, we have something to eat. We have something to drink. No heartburn, no (laughs) acid reflux. I feel amazing because my hormones were already like changing that fast. The body is amazing. Our bodies are incredible. Yes. So, but here I am now, you know, like 44 years old. I'm like, I'm having heartburn and acid reflux again. Am I pregnant? No, something else is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, And then other symptoms, like I'm starting to have night sweats and Mm -hmm. um, like this crazy thing where I would feel like I was getting electric shocks all the time. Mm -hmm. That was actually, I discovered is related to like estrogen receptors in our body and it's crazy stuff. And so, yeah, I was experiencing perimenopause and the bioidentical hormones I was on weren't working anymore because I needed, I need to figure out new dosage because my hormone levels are dramatically changing. That's kind of the season I'm in right now. And, um, I feel like it's starting, I'm starting to be at a place where it's more manageable, um, still challenging. And I still feel like, you know, the, most of those symptoms have lessened Mm-hmm. But I'm still trying to figure out how to manage it all. But it's not as bad as it was in the beginning when I didn't know what was going on. And I just was like, oh, man, yeah. I'm struggling with this again. Definitely. And all, I think probably just the fact that you've already worked through something and got some help gives you hope to know that, okay, there's yes. probably something we can shift or do. And also, I think when we were first talking, you had found somebody to work with doing some I don't know if it was a um, changing nutrition or a workout plan, but that was proving effective as well, right? Wasn't that helping you through some of the symptoms? Yeah. Yeah, I have, um, I have had a health coach that I worked with um, and she was really helpful in giving me ideas for things like, uh, like changing my diet, like eating a lot more protein for me was really helpful. Like, Mm -hmm helping with my energy, helping with hormones, um, Mm -hmm. balancing them, helping with moods, Mm -hmm. um, adjusting things like, um, giving me different workouts like like when I'm on my period to make my, like to do a workout that's like more calm and gentle and not. Tell us, tell us what a period workout is. This is like stretching. Well, it's just that it's like not yeah. this. Like you don't do the same kind of workout at the same level of intensity, like right on your period, because your sense. body needs you to be like at, at a calmer state. Mm-hmm. And like, I think just even understanding like the different, like like the way your cycle is yeah. at different places all month yeah. long. And there are periods where you're going to have in the month or times during the month where you're going to have more energy based on mm-hmm. your square like yeah. that in your cycle. Learning how that all works is so helpful. Yes. Um, when you're like, because this is my, if I'm teaching my daughter at 16 yeah. or when you're 46, like wherever you're at, learning how your body works and it really is a cycle yeah. that is different every like seven or so ish days, like that's such valuable information. And so so important. She had me do things like grounding, like go stand outside in the grass, which Mm -hmm. really like for me, like, um, like just being still for, you know, five or 10 minutes and (laughs) listening to nature and being quiet. Um, that's really helpful. And then the last six months when I've been working on a book, I stopped working with her because mm. I felt like I just didn't have time for one more thing. I didn't want to be accountable for one more thing. Right. I just felt stretched too thin. And um, honestly, that was a bad move because mm-hmm. I, was uh, say, Let me guess. I stopped. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I stopped doing all the things to care for myself and I have paid the consequence. Right? I if you don't feel at my best. It's yes. Yeah, I don't it's, feel at my best. Yes. It's like the whole, I mean, it's so overdone, but the whole oxygen mask, right? Like the yeah. other day I got home and my son needed something and I was like, oxygen mask, mom's hungry. I'm going to like, I've got yeah. to, I, I can't even think right now. And, and I love what you're saying too. It's just kind of honoring your body. Like we are amazing women. God made us with this just incredible system and hormonal balance. And 
And of course, there's going to be times where it's off or difficult, but to kind of honor that and work with it, say, what do Mm -hmm. I need today? And then what I love, well, you, I'm in a household boys, but I'm even trying to educate my boys and talk about things. And I'll be like, remember, I talked about that period and my 14 year old's going, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk. Be quiet. I'm like, no, because someday you're going to have a wife and you're going to wish that you had tuned in a little. So talking about it, yeah. helping the family support you by saying today, this is really what I need. And I'm not yeah. crazy. It's it's actually, I'm a woman. God made me like this. So mm-hmm. work with me. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Because think about like, because I've done the same with my sons, you know, like to, to be able to say like, Hey, they have hormone issues mm-hmm. themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boys do. Um, you know, so do girls and so do boys. And like when they're feeling like oh, those yeah. hormonal loads. They have it too. To be able to say, hey, how can I support you? How can I help yes. you? Um, and then like, because I can say, hey, remember when I'm like uh-huh. having a hormonal issue mm-hmm. and I'm struggling? Like, I know how you feel. Let me yeah. come alongside you. Yes. But then on the flip side, when I'm like when having it, I can be like, hey, you know how I can have helped you when you're struggling with your hormones and it's been a bad day for you. Mm-hmm. Here's how you can do that for me. I really need you to put away the dishes for me. That would help so much. I'm going to go yes. have tea in my room with the door closed. <laughs> or whatever. Absolutely. Like, it, just showing them that it's mom, like when mom is having a hard time, she's not crazy. She extra. just needs mm-hmm. extra support and yeah. they need extra support. And we can all give that to each other. Oh, that's so good. I think that's that's really important. And I think it's going to transfer to other things in life as well. And and just those conversations probably go a lot further than we realize. So I love that. It's just so good to talk to our kids. Like you said, talk yes. to our kids about everything. And everything. Yeah. And our sons and our daughters need to yes. know like this is a real part of life. Yes. We can help each other out. Yes. And amen. I love that so much. And this this conversation, again, today, this is a girlfriend chat. We're just sharing it, Greta's, you know, honest story. But I know that this opens up all kinds of things because hormones are a big topic and and mm-hmm. nobody nobody fully understands them, I don't think. But, you know, there's plenty of different theories. And, and I do want to talk more moving forward about perimenopause, some of the things that I'm walking through right now. But I I love that we can talk about this. And I don't think it's something women talk about enough. Well, I think there is some stigma associated Mm -hmm. with it, you know, like, like, oh, you know, we're getting older. So we want to pretend that that's not happening. We want to hide it or something that we're somehow like less, you know, amazing because we're going through perimenopause or we're metapausal. I mean, people will say Mm -hmm. like, well, aren't you too young for that? It's like, no, you could be 35 and go through okay. perimenopause or like, pause, like, or yeah. you could be 65. Like it's vast. Again, it bodies is. are different. There's no it stigma. Is. We don't have to be ashamed. We're still so vibrant, vibrant, amazing people wherever we're at. Um, yes. And so, you'll love my, yeah. my mom had a hysterectomy at age 40. So I didn't watch her go through all of this. Um, but, but she's very, my mom's super like, I don't want to say stoic. She's super fun and stuff, but she doesn't ever complain. She doesn't. And so she was kind of of the mindset. And I'm wondering if this was a generational thing, but like mind over matter. So she's like, well, I'm not going to go through menopause. I'm like, who are you kidding? You know, but, but I, I admired her strength in that, but I'm like, you know what, that's that she probably could have used more supportive, but with that, I laugh because I'm going to be 54 and I'm still not in menopause. I'm just in perimenopause. And my mom would, every time I've been around her and I have talked about having my period, she's like, when are you going to quit that? Like, like I get to decide. And I'm like, mom, sorry, that's not up to me. <laughs> like, I wish I knew. <laughs> right. I just crack up at that. But yes, I think that, that this is a generation that talks about things more than the last. And that's a good yeah. thing. So Let's yeah. keep having these conversations. I think it's really important. And you're not alone out there if this is something you deal with. So maybe before we close, Greta, from your wealth of experience, is there like one just word of wisdom or piece of advice you'd give to a younger woman who is resonating with what you're talking about? Yeah, I would um, say um, listen to what my husband said to me, like, and don't let it go so far before you get help. Like, 
don't um, get to the point where it feels, you know, scary. Mm -hmm. Um, don't scare the overwhelming, like, yeah, don't scare the dog and get, get help. And, and that doesn't necessarily mean like you have to go get on some kind of medication. Help might be like you do a babysitting trade and you have three hours to yourself once a week and your friend watches your kids. And the next week you watch her kids for three hours. Um, that might be the help. Or maybe you're like on Saturday, babe, I would love to be able to sleep in and just stay in my room for two extra hours while you take kids to the park. Like, but, but getting help a lot of times means asking for it, Mm -hmm. you know, like figuring out what you need, what will Mm -hmm. help and, and then asking for the help. So don't be afraid to ask. Don't Mm -hmm. wait too long to ask. Um, get the help you need because it is going to actually impact the, the overall health of your whole home and your whole family. So um, true. So yeah, so, get help when you need it. That's, that's a good word to wrap up with. So thank you, Greta, for just being willing to share your story and all the things you do, just sharing from your heart so vulnerably. It means so much to all of us. So thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you're opening up this conversation. I'm sure a lot of women are going to really, really, really resonate. Yeah. And if people want to just jump on their phone or computer and find you and follow you right now, where can they go? Oh, yeah. Um, just Instagram is where I'm the most active. My handle is Ma and Paul Modern. But you could Greta. also search Greta Eskridge. I have a website. Um, you can find me in, you know, um, uh, those are the top places. Oh, and the podcast. And the podcast. <laughs> the Greta Eskridge show. <laughs> there we go. Yes. So, yeah. I'm all over the place. You just Perfect. Google me and I'll show up. Google Greta. And I love that name too. And I will be linking to all those places in my show notes. So thank you again, Greta. Thank you all for listening. And um, we'll keep, we'll hopefully keep this conversation going. All right, friends, I hope that conversation was an encouragement to you. And I think the take home message is just knowing you're not alone and that there's always hope. So please do spread the word about this podcast episode in case someone in your life might be blessed by this conversation as well. And you can find show notes and links to everything we mentioned over at monicaswanson.com forward slash Greta dash hormones. Alrighty. So God bless you guys. More great episodes next week. We're diving into pelvic floor health. So how's that? Right? We're getting really practical. And I think you're going to love this conversation with a certified doctor of physical therapy who specializes in women's health and happens to be a good friend of mine. So can't wait to share that one with you. Uh, Have a wonderful rest of your week. And until next time, aloha. Aloha.